I wanted to speak about Margaret Court and her shoddy treatment at the hands of Tennis Australia, who are reluctantly acknowledging the 50th anniversary of her, of her Grand Slam year next week. The Australian Open organisers seem determined to mar the celebration of Australia's greatest ever female player with their infantile moral posturing. Margaret Court's extraordinary sporting feats make her arguably Australia's greatest ever female athlete and inarguably a tennis legend. But Tennis Australia appear more proud of the opening of gender neutral toilets at Melbourne Park than a trailblazing woman who dominated the sport at the highest level. In the eyes of Tennis Australia, her record breaking exploits are tainted because she is a devout Christian who is opposed to same sex marriage. For reasons that defy logic, Tennis Australia continue to play these divisive political games, grandstanding on issues that have nothing to do with tennis and risk really alienating a sizeable portion of the Australian community. Court's opinions and religious beliefs do not detract from her greatness as an athlete. And it's worth remembering that we never punish sports stars who spout divisive leftist opinions, whether it's Pat Cash trashing Australia Day or Martina Nat, Nat Ratulova's many, many demented anti-Trump diatribes, including claims that Trump is worse than mass murdering communist leaders. Now, personally, I was one of the roughly 60% of Australians who voted for same-sex marriage. I'm an atheist and I've got a belief system that's vastly different to Margaret Court's. But like most Australians, I also believe in free speech and abhor bullies who want to intimidate people into silence or punish them for wrong speak. One would have thought that Tennis Australia would have learnt from the many mistakes made by Rugby Australia, which in its eagerness to showcase its diversity and inclusiveness, succeeded only in alienating a significant number of Polynesian players who shared Israel Folau's religious beliefs, as well as many members of the wider community who didn't agree with Folau, but were appalled that he was sacked for expressing those beliefs. As we all know, in the end, Rugby Australia had to issue a grovelling apology and a multi-million dollar cheque to Folau. Tennis Australia should remember that the no vote received a higher percentage than Labor at the last federal election. To treat the two in five Australians who do not embrace gay marriage as bigots who are only worthy of scorn is hardly inclusive.